Lesson 4 is on multiplying and dividing rational numbers. That includes fractions and decimals, positive numbers, and negative numbers. To review, let's start with the fact that you're well aware of that 8 times 4 is positive 32. Positive 8 times positive 4 is positive 32. So if we change one thing in the factors and make it negative 8 times positive 4, it stands to reason that the product would be the opposite, which it is. So negative 8 times positive 4 is negative 32. And if we keep negative 8 the same and make negative 4, make 4 a negative 4, it would reason that we will also flip the sign of the product and make it positive 32, which leads to the rule that if the signs are the same, the answer is positive, and the signs are different, the answer is negative. So same signs. We have here, positive and positive gives a positive answer. A negative times a positive, there's different signs, gives a negative answer. And again, same signs, two negatives, makes a positive. Keep in mind this is only for multiplication. It also works for division. That is not the rule that for addition and subtraction, but it works for multiplication and division. So if we had related facts like 16 divided by 2, that's positive 8. 16 divided by negative 2 is negative 8, and negative 16 divided by negative 2 would be also be a positive 8. So again, that rule works. If the signs are the same, the um, quotient is, neg is positive. If the signs are different, the quotient is negative. When you're multiplying decimal numbers, you can treat the numbers as if they're whole numbers. So in this example of 3 and 14 hundredths times 4 tenths, we can do this multiplication as if it's 314 times 4. So let's, at least in the beginning, let's see what, that's how we start. So we'll say 4 times 4 is 16 and carry the 1. 4 times 1 plus 1 is 5, and 4 times 3 is 12. And we don't need to um, really multiply here by 0 to get this second partial product. They would all be zeros if we put them in there. So this tells us the digits in our answer. There's a 1, a 2, a 5, and a 6. We have to look at how many decimal places there are in the two factors. So there are two decimal places in the 3.14, 1, 2, and a third here, which tells us we're going to move the decimal three places to the left. And it'll get placed here between the 1 and the 2. If we think about what the meaning of this problem is, we start with 3, and if we take 4 tenths of it, we're taking about half of it. So the answer should be about half of 3 to do it reasonably, which this would make sense. That would be, the decimal would fall between the 1 and the 2. We can't really put it anywhere else to make it be. If we know that the digits in the answer are going to be 1, 2, 5, and 6, the only place we could put the decimal to make it reasonable would be between the 1 and the 2 to make it close to half of 3. So let's take a look at another example. Let's make it negative 2.06 times 0 0.12. And we know right away this will be a negative answer because we have a negative number times a positive number. It's going to be about a tenth of negative 2, which means somewhere probably in the neighborhood of negative... 0 0.02. Let's see what comes out. 2 times 6 is 12. Here they want 2 times 0 plus 1 gives us 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Notice I'm not worrying about the, the negative sign right now. When we do partial products, don't concern yourself with that. Enter a 0 to begin multiplying our second partial product. And 1 times 6 gives us 6. 1 times 0 is 0. And 1 times 2 is 2 and do the addition, 2, 7, 4, 2, and count the decimal places, 1, 2, 3, 4, and go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and it goes right there, sorry about that, go right there. Now what would happen and I don't think I'm going to be able to do this, but if I would have um, 
if this would have had, if this decimal, I can't really show you, but if this decimal would slide over here, and we would have five decimal places in the answer, if it would be 12 thousandths times two and six hundredths, we would have to count over five places, which is going to present a problem, because we go over one, two, three, four, and we need to create another decimal place, so this is where we would annex a zero, just imagine a zero being there, and the decimal would come in front of the zero. When you divide a whole number into a decimal, decimal number, such as 3 into 2 and 4 tenths, you can divide it like it's 3 into 24, which would be 8, and then just bring the decimal point straight up. And it's convenient to put that 0 in there, so you see the answer is 0 and 8 tenths. If, however, you have a similar problem, but only make it 3 tenths into 2.4, you'll follow the, the rule or the procedure that you never divide by a decimal number. Now, if we set this up with a using a, a, a bar, a division bar here as to make it look a bit like a fraction. This is the same problem as 2.4 divided by 3 tenths. We could use the equal fractions property. See, this is the same as 24 divided by 3. In other words, and when, when we do it, um, keeping the division bracket, this convention, we would say, let's multiply the divisor by 10, multiply the divisor by 10, and if you multiply the divisor by 10, you have to multiply the dividend by 10. So in this case, it looks like numerator denominator and the equal fractions property kind of applies. But when we're doing it with this kind of setup with the bracket, we show it like this. We say multiply by 10, multiply by 10. So now we're ready to do 3 into 24 and we would not want to place a decimal here after the 8 because this is the whole number 8. We don't want to put a decimal point there because then we would read that as 8 and and what? And there's nothing there, so we just don't put the decimal there. So if we had, let's take a look at another more, somewhat more complicated problem that looks like this one. Let's make it 0 0.03 into 2.4. So we follow our rules that we're going to slide this decimal over two places, which is multiplying by 100. And we prepare to multiply 2.4 by 100. So we shift that decimal over. We know it's got to go two places, but we can't do it because there's nothing there. But we can put something there. Good old zero slides in there. We go over one, two. And this problem is the same as 3 into 240, which would be 80. But it's really the same answer as 3 hundredths divided into 2 and 40 hundredths. And if this happened to be uh, a negative number, negative 0 0.03 into positive 2.40, our answer would just be a negative 80. If we had the fractions A over B times C over D, we simply multiply A times C and B times D to get the answer, which could also be written AC B, D. So if we put some numbers in there, like 3 fourths times 2 thirds, that's 6 twelfths, which reduces to a half. It would have been easier to reduce this problem actually before we multiply by comparing all, the, all of the numbers in the denominator to all the numbers in the numerator, and we see we have a 3 and a 3, so we can divide both this 3 by 3 and this by 3, and that result would be 1 over 1. And you can also see there's the 2 goes into 2, and 2 goes into 4. 2 goes into 2 one time, and 2 goes into 4 two times. And then we have 1 times 1, which is 1, and 2 times 1, which gives us 2. So this reducing before you multiply often makes the problem simpler. In the section on multiplying fractions, I didn't talk about how to multiply mixed numbers because I wanted to show you in the division uh, section here. The algebraic definition of division says is if you have A over B divided by C over D, you can change that to be A over B times D over C. Because you often get a situation where you can't divide A evenly by C or B evenly by D. So, but you can always get the product of A and D and B and C. So what does it look like when we have mixed numbers? And so let's do the problem three and a half divided by, now if we pick a smaller number than three and a half, the quotient will be larger than one. 
And if we pick a larger number, say five, or five and a third, compared to three and a half, the question would be less than one. So let's try that with five and a third. And so we're really saying, how many times can we subtract five and a third from three and a half? And you can't do it a whole time, it's less than one. So we know this answer is going to turn out to be less than one. So if we follow, well, first thing we want to do is change both of these. This is how um, the mixed numbers are, for, are different than multiplying just fractions. We're going to change three and a half to an improper fraction and change five and a third to an improper fraction. So we know it's going to be halves divided by thirds. And to count how many halves are in three and a half, we will do two times three plus one. Two times three is six, plus one is seven. So that would be a seven. To change uh, five and a third to thirds, we'll do three times five is 15, and one more makes 16. So that would be 16 thirds. And following the algebraic definition of division, we'll make it seven halves times three sixteenths. So we just flip the 16 thirds. It's called the reciprocal or the inverse of 16 thirds. And as we compare these numerators, denominators, two doesn't, there's, uh, two is not a factor of seven and two is not a factor of three and they have no common factors. And likewise, 16 has no common factors with seven and 16 has no common factors with three, which means when we multiply this out, it's already gonna be in lowest terms, which is kinda nice. Seven times three is 21, two times 16 is 32. And as predicted, this is less than 1. And also we know it's lowest terms already, so this is kind of a nice one. Um, very convenient. And if, again, if we had, if these were both, if, there, if it was um, a negative 3 and a half, then this would be negative 7 halves. And you could actually put the negative sign with the 2, the 7, or somewhere outside the bracket. I'll put it with the 7. And then we have a, po a negative times a positive, so this answer would be a negative answer. And that negative sign could go next to the 21 or the 32. It doesn't matter. Or if we would say they're both negative, negative 3 and a half divided by negative 5 and a third, that's negative, that's negative, that's negative, that's negative. But 21 over 32 is not negative because the product of two negative numbers is positive.